Well, hello, and welcome to Fuquay Verena United Methodist Church. My name is Owen. I'm one of the pastors here, if we haven't had a chance to meet yet, and we're glad you're here. We know that life can get crazy, and sometimes we have to find time to worship during the week, and so we have crafted this worship opportunity just for you. Uh, we know, you know, nothing's perfect, but whenever you're worshiping and wherever you're worshiping, we're glad that we can be here worshiping together. Uh, if you are with us for the first time or you'd like to let us know you're here, uh, if they just got questions we can follow up with. We'd love for you to text us, send uh, the word hello to the number that's right here at the bottom of your screen. We'd love to get back in touch with you as soon as we can to see how we can connect or help solve whatever it is uh, that you've got for us. So don't hesitate to reach out. Also, if this is an opportunity that you regularly participate in and you'd like to partner with us in mission and ministry. Uh, We'd love to have that partnership with you as we serve our greater community here around Fuquay Verena. Um, You can go to our website, fvumc.org slash give. Uh, We'd love, again, any sort of support that you can offer will help us continue to do this and do it well. Um, And so you can check that out while you're there. Um, Anything that you need, hopefully, will be right there on our website. Uh, particularly if you're looking for other worship opportunities, uh, you'll be able to see those on our worship page. Uh, And again, we're just so glad you're here and we hope that you find something meaningful, something you can hang your hat on this week as we participate in worship together. Well, hello, friends. It is so good to be with you uh, in worship today. If you've been with us the last little bit, then you might know that we are in the season of the church called Lent. And this is the 40-day season leading up to Easter uh, where we slow down. We also, in this season, spend a bit more time in both reflection and confession. Uh, This week, we are in our second to last week of our sermon series as we are walking through a prayer of confession that we typically pray Uh, before we come for communion together. And the line that we'll be talking about today is forgive us, we pray. And we have a a handout both um, that is 
online. You can go to feumc.org and you can just see it there at the top of the homepage that has the full kind of reflection guide in it. Or if you're worshiping with us live, we'll have a link to it in the comment section here on Facebook as well. And that will kind of show you the fullness of this prayer. And we will have an opportunity at the end to be able to pray through it uh, all together. And uh, before we get into the meat of our sermon this morning, I did want to give a little bit of a content warning since this is very different than something that we might typically talk about. Uh, But as we talk through forgiveness this morning, we will be talking a little bit about animal sacrifice as well as kind of specifically mentioning the significance of blood in the midst of that. And I realize that can be uh, tricky and kind of a a trigger for some. So just know that that's coming up and kind of prepare yourselves accordingly um, or if It is better to choose uh, not to continue listening. I certainly will understand, but wanted to let you know that was coming. Um, After worship uh, last week, I talked to somebody who noticed the line (laughs) that was coming up for this morning, and uh, they asked me, like, Hope, like, how are you uh, feeling about this? And I told them that I had actually been dreading this day for about a month now, and I think there's probably a lot wrapped up in that that we could take a long time unpacking, Uh, but I also in some ways, um, I've been looking forward to it. And yet kind of, as I have been thinking about my dread, I think kind of half of that is because I know that it causes me to confront like my own sin and my own brokenness. And um, the other half of what I've been feeling is just the weightiness of this topic. Like this is, you know, such a massive uh, topic that I don't feel like we can do justice in just kind of the 12 to 15 minutes that I have with you this morning. And so I I realize that um, there's there's going to be a lot packed into the next little bit. And I certainly feel the weight of all of that. And we'll try to navigate it uh, as best as we can as we go along together. Uh, but this morning, Uh, Due to the focus of the prayer of confession, asking God to forgive us, uh, we'll primarily be talking about kind of God's forgiveness to us rather than the communal work of forgiveness. Um, However, I do think that it is important to note, too, that our relationship with God is always deeply intertwined with our relationship to our neighbors. Um, If you've been with us at all throughout the series, you've probably heard us talking about um, both the two greatest commandments that Jesus gives to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, as well as to love your neighbor as yourself. Um, Again, a reminder that these things are always intertwined together. And as I've been reflecting uh, this week, one thing that keeps sticking out to me is um, as we think through forgiveness, that it is something that at such a young age uh, we begin to learn about. Um, If your family is anything like mine, I remember vividly uh, my parents regularly forcing my sister and I to apologize to one another to ask for forgiveness. And, you know, we would always say it more often with like gritted teeth and Um, you know, they would question us like, did you really mean that? You might need to do that again kind of thing. And it certainly uh, was a muscle that felt so natural for us to flex as kids and for something that our parents kind of taught us to do even from a very young age. And yet I realized that um, even as kids that it might have felt so natural that as adults, it can be so tricky to navigate. Like what does forgiveness uh, look like in a context other than Um, saying sorry to one another in the moment with gritted teeth and when you're kind of questioning, like, do I really mean this? Uh, It can be hard to know and uh, navigate what forgiveness looks like in our relationships um, individually as well as in a community as a whole. And the work of forgiveness can feel, um, or while the work of forgiveness can feel really hard to navigate, I also believe that it is vital to our life as Christians In fact, I believe that both forgiveness from God and forgiveness of one another is at the heart of what it means to be Christian. In fact, when uh, Peter in Matthew chapter 18 asked Jesus how often he should forgive, Peter kind of offers up to Jesus, well, like seven times, you know, as kind of a starting point. And Jesus is like, no, 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 not seven, seven times, 70 times or seven times or um, 77, depending on the translation. And that interaction is then followed up by an example of kind of what Jesus means behind this. And he talks about a man that owed um, his master 10,000 talents, which converting it, it means like literally billions of dollars. It is a lot of money. Um, It's not a wage that would have been ever attainable in the lifetime. And so this um, person begged his master to free him from this debt. And his master did. And rather than kind of holding him in a place of, Um, servitude, he extended that generosity 
um, to him and said, you know, I've canceled all of your debt. You can go free. And then it talks about how the, um, the servant then realizes that there is somebody that owes them money. And this is just, you know, a couple hundred dollars. It's, you know, a couple, several days wage. It's not an insignificant amount of money. And yet compared to the debt that was canceled, it is, um, certainly, uh, feels like it pales in comparison. And rather than extending that same generosity towards a neighbor, uh, this person decides to put on their neighbor, the one who owes them money in jail. And um, rather than forgiving that debt and says, you know, you need to stay there until you were able to, to pay me back what you owe. And this scripture reminds me both of, gosh, just the generosity of God who cancels our billion dollar debt, as well as kind of the other side of that, our stinginess with one another that I certainly see myself in of wanting to call one another out for small things um, in comparison to the extravagance of God's grace and forgiveness towards us. Um, Again, both forgiveness from God and forgiveness of one another is at the heart of what it means to be Christian. We certainly see that in the midst of this story. Um, Forgiveness invites us into the work of releasing what we've been holding on to so tightly, or maybe even what's been holding on to us, uh, so that God can free us and transform us so that we can head off in a new direction. Again, we'll spend most of our time this morning focusing on what um, asking God for forgiveness looks like. But before we get there, I think it's important to point out that forgiveness can be particularly complex to navigate in relationships um, that are unsafe or relationships where great harm has been done. And I want to name that forgiveness is not an invitation for kind of continued harm to be done. While forgiveness in these relationships can certainly be possible um, and very freeing, it also uh, may need to be navigated without physical presence or proximity um, to that person in order to keep you safe. So if you're in a situation like this, um, please know that we are here for you. And if we can help you to navigate any of these complexities, we certainly uh, would love to be able to journey in that work with you. I'm also realizing uh, the gravity of that and the difficulty in the midst of it too. Um, Generally speaking, um, kind of apart from from that, we tend to think of forgiveness as as a pretty private act, um, something that is between us and God, but it actually has roots in a very um, communal and public act done before God. Um, In first century in Israel, uh, animal sacrifice would have been uh, the means of forgiveness and atonement. And it's not something that would have happened at home or in a confession booth with a priest, uh, but rather it would have been something that happened very publicly, kind of in an open space or temple. Um, And there's a a model of a reconstructed temple, a second temple period in Jerusalem, kind of depicting what this second temple would have looked like. So we'll pop that up on the screen and it might just be helpful to kind of get a picture or an image of what this might have looked like. So when anyone had committed a sin, they would either bring um, they'd bring some kind of animal, often a lamb or a sheep, with them to sacrifice. Um, and if you know, it was too far a journey for them to carry uh, that animal with them, they would come uh, with money to um, kind of the money changers that were se- set up on that left-hand side of the screen there. And um, you would go and, yeah, exchange money for an animal. And then once you had your animal for sacrifice, you would stay there in line with everybody else. Again, this was just a really public act. Uh, you would have waited your turn with everybody and with all of their animals um, for your turn to go to the high priest. Um, And when it was your turn, you would be welcomed by the priest into the inner courtyard. And there'd be a huge altar there. And you'd take your animal that you brought with you and put it on the altar. And in that space, you would name your sins. And in response, the priest uh, would take that unblemished animal, often, again, a goat or a lamb, and they would slaughter that animal. And its blood would be um, poured out into a bowl. And gosh, I mean, I, I recognize that this feels really graphic and um, particularly even like wrong to kill an animal, to watch it die. And yet it also for them was a reminder of the gravity of the actions of our sins, um, how our actions and particularly when we sin, it causes hurt and pain. And that is not the kind of life or way that God intends for us to live. And blood is something that I know for many of us is something that we shy away from. It's something we tend to get a little bit woozy even thinking about, something we don't spend a lot of our time thinking about or focusing on. 
However, in this kind of time period, blood was seen as the source of life. It was also seen as really uh, purifying, and it was often thought to be, um, and it was like through the blood in, in that season and the blood of a lamb or another animal, the first century Jews would have been kind of declared to be freed or forgiven um, after they had gone through this ritual and sacrificed the animal, then the priest would be able to declare them free to go, freed and forgiven. In just a few weeks, uh, we will turn towards Holy Week and we will walk through Jesus's last days uh, before he gave himself up for us. And before he did so, he gathered with his disciples around a meal. And while they were eating, he took a loaf of bread. After blessing it, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and he said, take, eat, this is my body. And he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from this, all of you. And he says, This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never drink of the fruit of the vine until the day that I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And it's setting up, he's inaugurating the kingdom of God. And when Jesus said these words, he was speaking new meaning into a ritual his disciples knew well. Jesus was offering himself as a sacrificial lamb, pouring himself out for us so that his blood could wash us clean, um, not just for one time, but for all time. Prince Jesus made a way for us to be forgiven, not through the blood of an animal, but through giving his very own life so that once and for all we could be forgiven and made right with God. We no longer have to go through uh, the same process. We don't have to go and buy an animal to be sacrificed on our behalf because God has done that work for us. We no longer have to go to a high priest to be absolved, to receive forgiveness. Uh, but through um, Jesus, the high priest, we have been um, freely offered forgiveness by a God whose love for us is so extravagant that he gave up himself fully for us. And this morning, we have the opportunity um, to be forgiven, to collectively and individually receive forgiveness from our God who so extravagantly loves us. Um, I don't know what you came today kind of holding on to. I don't know what's been weighing you down or what you need forgiveness for. But I do know that our God is a God who hears us when we pray. So I'm going to invite us into a time of reflection as we prepare to pray through our prayer of confession once again. During this time, I'd invite you to offer to God whatever it is that you have been holding on to that you feel like you need a forgiveness for. Maybe it's um, something small, something that you uh, said on the way to church this morning that you regret, um, something that you, you did or left undone. Um, or maybe it's something that you've been struggling with for much longer that you are ready this morning to release to God. I'd remind you too, Again, that the work of repenting our sin, of confessing our sin, is not work to sit in shame, to simply feel bad about ourselves or what we've done. Um, but we do this work of confessing so that we can go off in a new direction, a direction more filled with the wholeness of life and flourishing. So let us confess together, trusting that God meets us in this work. And if some additional prompting questions are helpful, um, We'll put them up on the screen, or if you're looking at the handout, you can see them there. And these two questions that I would offer to you would be, first, what are you holding on to that you need to offer up to God? And second, what do you need to be loosed from and freed from so that you can go off in a new direction? Let's spend some time kind of praying and reflecting together, and we'll come back in a moment for our prayer of confession. Let us pray together. Merciful God, 
we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of the needy. Give us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Friends, hear this good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. And that proves God's extravagant love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. of this next song that we're going to sing just remind us that we're all really connected because we've all been in those places where we're feeling lost or we're feeling brokenhearted and it is our God that comes to us with that comfort and love and healing in his hands I came to you with my heart in pieces and found a God healing in his hands I turn to you put everything behind me and found the God who makes all things new I look to you drowning in my questions and found the God who holds all Trust in you and stepped out on the ocean. You caught my hand among the waves, cause you're the God of all my days. Each step I take, you make a way, and I will give.
Again, it's been great to be with you together today. Uh, I would remind you, we'd love to know you're here. Uh, if you want to text us, just text the word hello to the number that's at the bottom of your screen. We'd love to follow up with you, uh, particularly if there are questions you have after today's worship or if there's something we can do to help you take the next step in your life of faith, your journey. Uh, we'd love to be able to do that with you, to partner with you in that way. Um, so don't hesitate to reach out. And again, if you'd like to join with us in mission and ministry here in Fuquay Varina, uh, you can go to our website, fvumc.org slash give. Uh, we'd love to your support. We'd love to partner with you in ministry in all sorts of different ways. We have plenty of other worshiping opportunities uh, live on Sunday morning, uh, as well as throughout the week. And so don't forget to hop over to our website, fvumc.org, to check out all those opportunities. We'd love to get a chance to meet you should the time come. Uh, and until then, uh, it's been great to worship together with you today.